Welcome to Science Tree Channel and today's topic is alkenes. This is chapter number 12 from class 10th. In my previous lectures, I have discussed alkenes, its properties, its chemical reactions, its physical properties and uses. Today, we will dive into the topic that is more interesting. Let's join it. Now alkenes. They are hydrocarbons containing only carbon and hydrogen. Unsaturated compounds with at least one carbon to carbon double bond. It means that they are unsaturated compounds. There is an accommodation between these compounds. And from where that accommodation comes? Yes, due to double bonding. Alkenes give addition reactions because there is a double bond present in them and we can break one of the bond to add any other substance. So that's why they are most reactive. The word unsaturated is representing that we can add something else in it. And that something else can any substance which can be accommodated at that place by breaking the bond. Let's study that how it happens. They are more reactive than alkanes. Now the question arises that why? This is ethene. Having two bonds in it. The word eth is representing that I am talking about two carbons. These gray balls are representing carbon atoms. And the word ene is representing these two double bonds. So, what it is? It is ethene. Now, the bond, this one, this is sigma bond. And the upper bond is pi bond. The pi bond is formed by the overlap of p subshells. And sigma bond is formed by the overlap of s subshells. Now the p subshell overlapping is weaker than as compared to the s subshell overlapping. Because p subshells overlapped by tails not by heads, while S subshells overlap by heads. So that's why the upper bond is pi bond and it's a weaker bond. It can break down easily and we can add any other substance in it, which makes it more reactive than as compared to alkanes. Alkanes are also recognized as Olefins, a latent word meaning oil forming. And it's a very important short question because first members form oily products when react with halogens. And halogens are group 7A. Now, these are some very renowned double bonded compounds. With their molecular formula, condensed formula, structural formula, and cross and dot formula. I have given you a detailed lecture on all these formula types. Now, the first example is ethene, or we can also call it as ethylene. Its formula is C2H4. And if I talk about condensed formula, that is the formula in which hydrogen atoms are condensed but the bonding between the carbon and carbon atom is showing. So here it is H2C double bond CH2. And if I talk about structural formula, in this formula we can count the number of bonds between each atom as well as we can recognize the number of atoms as well. Now the next is cross and dot formula. 
in this formula the bonds are shown by means of dots and cross the crosses are representing hydrogen electrons of hydrogen the electrons which are present in the valence shell we know that bonding is always formed between the valence shell electrons we never considered all those electrons which are present in the inner shells and the dots are representing carbon atom electrons of carbon atoms now the next example is propene the word prop is representing three carbon atoms and in is representing double bond so c3h6 molecular formula and if i talk about condensed formula it can be ch3 ch ch2 now the number of hydrogen atoms are reducing especially with the carbon number 2 it has only one hydrogen atom why because the rest of the valency of carbon is satisfied by means of bonds okay now in structural formula we can count the number of bonds as well as number of atoms next is butene the word but is representing four carbon atoms and in is representing again the double bond so it will gonna be c4h8 in the next formula it is pentene c5 is representing pen and in is representing double bond so whenever there is a double bond between a hydrocarbon chain it will be known as alkene and the carbon and carbon atom which will be joined by means of this double bond have less number of hydrogen atoms because they satisfy their valencies by means of forming bonds now the occurrence from where we get it what's the origin alkenes being more reactive than alkenes seldom occur free in nature as they are reactive so they always formed mostly formed in combined state not always lower alkenes occur in coal gas in minute quantities ethylene is present in natural gas sometimes to the extent of 20% alkenes are produced in large amounts by cracking of petroleum and do you know what is cracking yes breaking large chains of hydrocarbons into smaller ones by using heat pressure or catalyst that will be known as cracking and we mostly used it in fuel forming in diesel fuels and all that now how can we prepare double bond how can we prepare alkenes it's quite easy we have to add the bond by removing an atom so alkenes are prepared by the removal of small atoms like hydrogen hydroxyl or halogen from the adjacent carbon atoms of the saturated compounds to make them unsaturated so as to create a double bond between carbon atoms now the first method is dehydration of alcohols the word d means to remove hydration means water now from where i have to remove this from alcohols but i have to use large and excess amount of sulfuric acid to do this but why because sulfuric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and we all know that strong oxidizing agent means that it will reduce itself and we need hydrogen because alcohols will give us hydroxyl group and hydrogen will comes from 
sulfuric acid. As sulfuric acid is undergoing reduction because it's a strong oxidizing agent. So now we will get hydrogen from sulfuric acid and hydroxyl group from ethanol. And in this way, water will be removed. But this process will be take place in two steps. In the first step, we will form ethyl hydrogen sulfate, which will decompose on heating to produce ethene. And that ethene will be collected over water. The reaction will take place at 180 degree. Now here we don't have to cram it as we are doing dehydration of alcohols so definitely we have to take alcohols in reactants. And the second thing we need hydrogen so that's why we will use sulfuric acid. Now one hydrogen will be given by sulfuric acid and Hydroxyl group will be given by one of the carbon atom. In the product, I have ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Now, this ethyl hydrogen sulfate on heating will lose sulfuric acid. So, we can say that it is using as a catalyst because we will get it at the end of the reaction. Now in this reaction, this ethyl, sorry, methyl group will give us hydrogen and this group will give us sulfuric acid. So in this way, one of the H in sulfuric acid will be given by this methyl group. And in the result, one of the electron will be free from this methyl group by releasing hydrogen. And this CH2 group will release this bond. And in the result, we will get alkene and sulfuric acid. Now, the other way is dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides. D means to remove. And what we have to remove? We have to remove hydrogen and halogen. For this reaction, we have to take alkyl halides in the reactants. In this case, alkyl will give hydrogen atom and halide will give halogen. So, removal of hydrogen and halogen takes place from adjacent carbon atoms to create a double bond, to create alkene. In this reaction, I have taken ethyl bromide because I have two carbon atoms. So it will gonna be named as ethyl bromide. This reaction will take place in the presence of KOH, potassium hydroxide. Now one of the hydrogen will removed from methyl group, this CH3. And this CH2 group will give bromine. In this way, one of the electron of both carbons will get free to form bond with each other. And this give us alkene. While the hydrogen atoms which are removed are adjusted in such a way that potassium will form a bond with bromine to give us KBr and the hydrogen atom which we removed from the methyl group will form a bond with hydroxyl group and this will give us water. So in this way the desired product alkene will be attained when we react ethyl bromide with potassium hydroxide. Thank you so much. For more videos, keep watching. Have a great day.